Guys, the other day I was browsing through my local Best Buy location thinking about the fact that I no longer had a modern Chromebook with which to test OS updates, so forth and so on. So I went over to the uh, unboxed section, the section of devices that had been purchased and then opened up and then returned for a cheaper price. And I came across a particular device, this device here, the Lenovo Flex 3. Now this does have the Pentium Silver N6000, eight gigs of RAM, which was a big thing for me. I did not want a four gigabyte RAM device in anything, even a Chromebook that seems like too little for me. And I got it for a pretty darn good price. It's already $90 off, but this thing was again, an open box and I happen to have a gift card as well. So I think I ended up spending about a hundred dollars on this thing, which is an absolute steal. So I brought it home and I've been using it for the last week or so. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I feel about this device. Now, perhaps you saw my using Chrome OS in 2023 video and you wanted to know what the device was I was using in that video. Well, this is that device. Let's start things off here by going around the device. Personally, I think that this kind of dark blue color is quite nice. And you also have this textured area over to one side, which definitely gives it a fairly distinct look and feel. We are keeping that same Chromebook logo up here on the top of the device. And this fairly minimal Lenovo logo over there is pretty decent as well. Nothing too crazy going on back here, which again, I do like, a very minimal approach. Over on the right side, we have a few different things. We have the power button, the volume rocker, a USB-A port, HDMI, and then I believe that is a Kensington lock, which is something I don't think I've ever used in my entire life. Over on the other side, there is a USB-C, which is your power delivery. Now, I do wish that there were two of these, one on each side because Sometimes I'm sitting on the couch and I want to charge this thing and the port is on the wrong side and that's a little bit frustrating. Put USB-C ports everywhere. USB-A, which has a mouse uh, dongle in it. There's a headphone jack and there is an SD card reader because yes, you can pop in an SD card on this thing. Once we open the thing up, you can see that Lenovo icon, that logo, which is on the cover, is also in the exact same place on the inside, which is fine. Max audio, big set of speakers up here at the top, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The keyboard is relatively large as well with a full number pad, even though it is a little bit scrunched. You do have the number pad over there. I do find typing on this thing to be pretty decent. This is one of the more usable keyboards I have in the house on a laptop or a tablet device like this. So definitely not a lot of complaints here. As you can see, not super loud, but it does have a fairly satisfying sound to it. Key travel is decent. It's obviously not super, super deep, but for this laptop, not too bad. Deck flex isn't really much of a problem either. It's a fairly solidly built device. We have a relatively large trackpad as well, which I kind of have a bit of a love-hate relationship with. Sometimes it is awesome. Other times when I'm using it, I go to move the mouse and the cursor only moves in these tiny little increments and I don't know why that is. It seems to happen when the device is under some sort of load, but it is very, very annoying. Luckily, it is an intermittent problem, but that is why I've got this mouse dongle plugged in because if I'm sitting down to really use this thing for an extended period of time, I'm probably gonna grab a mouse, either that or my arc mouse, something like that, because that's just a little subpar for me. Since I did just mention these speakers, which I do like the fact that they are at least pointing up. I hate downward facing speakers on laptops. That is the most useless thing in the world. So at least they're pointing upwards. Let's do a quick speaker test. We're gonna max out the volume and let's see what that sounds like. You just want some destroy. <laughs> camera app has always been a fairly simple app in terms of its design and also in terms of its functionality. As you can hear, the speakers are fairly decent. I do wish they got a little bit louder, but overall not too bad at all. Let's now turn our attention to this rather large 15.6 inch 1080p display, which I think I like quite a bit. I only have a couple of small complaints with it. The first one is the fact that yes, this is a touch screen, which is fantastic. However, if you are using a touch target, 
on this device in particular towards the top of the screen. Let's go to YouTube up here. Can you see how that screen kind of has wobble? That is one of my biggest pet peeves with touchscreen laptops. You can't wobble when I use it. That stuff drives me crazy. It doesn't wobble as much as some devices I have, but it still does wobble too much. If we punch up the brightness all the way, you can see this thing does get fairly bright. I tend to stay somewhere in this area. You can see the thing kind of moving down there. So I'm not quite midway, I'm a little bit past midway, and that feels pretty comfortable to me. So a decently bright screen. My second complaint with it is very, very minor. If you look at this photo and then you compare it to the same picture on my Pixel Fold, I don't know how well this is gonna pick up, but it does appear that on the Lenovo laptop, it is ever so slightly warmer than it is on the Pixel Fold and a little bit warmer than it actually was in reality. So maybe not the most color accurate display. Again, that is a very minor complaint though. Overall, pretty solid screen. And of course, this device is able to sort of transform, right? You can put this thing, this is difficult to do with the camera in front of me. This is something that can turn into, you know, tint mode or something like that, fold it all the way over into a tablet mode. So it is fully transformable, 360 hinge. Now, of course, when you have a device with the speaker spacing up like this, and then you can put it in tint mode, you do run into a small problem because now those speakers are facing away from you. So you can't really win in this circumstance with a device that can change shape. You'd have to put the speakers like on the side, like a phone or something to really work perfectly, but still not bad. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on the software experience here because it is Chrome OS and Chrome OS is Chrome OS. And I've also done a full video going over this operating system in 2023. So I will link that below if you wanna see a deep dive into it overall. I think that it is a fairly solid operating system at this point. I do enjoy the new start menu that they added. I like how they've organized their quick toggles over here and your notifications, your calendar. All this stuff I think does look pretty solid. The little now playing widget over here is pretty useful as well for media controls. And as you can see, it's not just media controls on this device. It's actually media controls for other devices in your house. And I do really enjoy the phone link sort of application here where you can see your most recent Chrome tabs as well as recent photos. And if it loads here, which this kind of underscores some of my issues, the inconsistencies, the recent applications. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll show how this works. Enabling the hotspot, silencing your phone, locating your phone, seeing your phone's battery, all this stuff working pretty darn well. I don't know why the applications are not loading. Let's jump into this real quick. Maybe we can toggle it off and on or something. Yeah, for some reason it thinks that my network doesn't support streaming apps for my phone, despite the fact that I have used this on multiple occasions. So I don't know, just a little bit of jankiness going on here, so I'm not going to demonstrate that feature. But what I will show you is that other Android apps do work just fine. My uh, Chromebook here is actually in developer mode, which allows me to sideload applications. The YouTube Android app does not typically work as an installable thing, but... If you go into developer mode, you can just sort of sideload it, and that's what I've done here, and it works just fine. And in general, Android apps do work really well. You can see sort of scrolling around on it. And even though you already saw this a second ago, let's just jump into a video, and you can see that it's working pretty well. We'll close this back out. Let's go into my start menu, and you can see here how many other Android apps I potentially have installed. And maybe a good one to test out to show some capabilities here would be Minecraft, because there is a Minecraft for Chrome OS now, and it works shockingly well. While I would not consider this to be a true gaming laptop, if you primarily game with things like this, Android applications or sort of lighter gaming type things, this is actually going to work just fine loading in there's a little bit of a hitchiness there but once you get going everything is just fine you can play this with your mouse and keyboard you can reach up and touch the screen and get touch screen control if you want to play it like that for whatever reason in general it does perform fairly admirably and again like lighter games this thing is going to be pretty solid this is my golem Personally, I really enjoy doing things like this. Let's open up threads and then we're going to hit search alt F. Yes, and it will pin it to that bottom right corner and I can then open up Chrome and be doing whatever it is I'm doing and have whatever app this is or even a web page if I want to do that way pinned down here and it will always stay floating on top. I actually really like that functionality. And of course, your multimedia apps are all going to work just fine as well. We'll fire up Max just so that you can see that. Let's change this from phone mode to resizable. And then we'll go ahead 
and go full screen with this thing. And there you go, we're off and running quite nice. Now, speaking of multimedia, something that I was able to do the other day that actually surprised me because I had done this in the past, or I should say I had tried to do this in the past with some of my older Chromebooks, and it absolutely did not work, was pull up a video on my web browser, right? So I was streaming a movie through the web browser, and I went to that cast button, I cast that tab to my television, full screened it, and then went to another window and was getting some work done at the same time. I think I actually even had an Android app in that floating window down below. So I'm running a movie, which is streaming to the TV, I'm in another couple of tabs working, and I have an Android app running, and it streamed pretty darn well. There were a couple of moments where the movie got a little bit hitchy, but nothing that broke the experience at all. It was very, very intermittent, and 99% of the time, it was absolutely fine, and we watched like a two and a half hour long movie like that, and that vein performance has been decent. Now, don't get me wrong. This Intel Pentium processor, this N6000, is a budget processor. It's not a high-end or even a mid-range processor. It runs at 3.3 gigahertz, and it is a quad core, but it's running Chrome OS, which is much lighter than pretty much any other operating system out there, and because of that, it still manages to run relatively well. The eMMC storage, only 64 gigs, is quite light and probably on the slow side, and that may be responsible for some of the little hitches and lags here and there, but overall, the experience is relatively smooth, aided by a full eight gigs of RAM on this model. Now, they do have battery life quoted as up to 10 hours, and I think I was probably getting closer to like seven or eight, something in that range with my use, but of course, that up to is probably going to be you know, tested just playing a movie, streaming a movie or, or YouTube video, something like that. So that's going to kind of vary a bit. But for me, mixed use browsing, Android, multimedia, six, seven, eight hours is what I was getting, which is more than enough for me. And with 45 watt charging, that's not too slow either. It could be a little bit faster, but it's not too bad. And I can verify that that is absolutely what it tops out at. I have plugged it into a 300 watt gallium nitride charging brick that I'm going to be reviewing here uh, probably early next month, and it does in fact hit 45 watts quite reliably. Overall, if you can find this thing for a good price, 479 is probably too steep for me. 389 is getting closer, but you can find you know deals on this thing, get lucky like I did. It's definitely a pretty darn solid Chromebook, and it's one that I'm going to continue using. I'm finding myself you know, enjoying having a proper laptop again to type on and to get some things done. I've been a Surface Pro user for a while, Sitting that thing on your lap is just not the most comfortable thing. This is more comfortable than that. And almost everything I do is in a web browser or there's an Android app that can kind of supplement things as well. So I'm actually enjoying it, even though there are those little hiccups, hangups, glitches, weird problems, weird inconsistencies, which I hope over time can kind of get addressed with Chrome OS updates. But again, like always, you should never buy a device based on what you hope it's going to be. Buy it with the knowledge of what it is right now. So keep in mind, you're not going to have this pristine experience on this device. You're likely to have a few glitches here and there. But by and large, the main functionality seems to work really quite well. Guys, I'm going to drop an affiliate link down below to Best Buy. If you go there, you click on my link and you purchase something, I will earn commission off of that click. So keep that in mind. A good way to support the channel. Guys, subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.